evening and welcome to the 7 o'clock news here on CNC3. I'm Charlene Ramdani. Good evening. Glad you can join us. I'm Samson Manton. In the headlines tonight, a shutdown continues at state oil company Petrotrin. The union warns of possible fuel shortages. The National Security Minister says no efforts to be spared in recovery of soldiers injured in Charlottesville accident. A security guard is found dead at a school in Diamond Vale. Attorneys for Muslim leader Abu Bakr scolded by Commission Chairman as he remains a no-show. And in sports tonight, Bangladesh prepare for Asia versus Caribbean T20 tournament. Top of our news tonight. National Security Minister Jack Warner says no effort will be spared in treating the military officers who were seriously injured in last evening's accident in Charlottesville. The accident involving members of the Defence Force rugby team has left at least eight persons warded at hospital, with one soldier said to be in a critical condition. The minister visited one of the injured soldiers today. Chester Sombrano reports. The Defence Force confirms that at 6.45 on Sunday evening, a military vehicle carrying members of the Defence Force rugby team was involved in an accident. 23 persons were on board, including four civilians. Eight of the injured were airlifted to Trinidad, and one soldier, Lance Corporal Azrian Bodhi, is said to be the most critical. He received a visit from National Security Minister Jack Warner on Monday at the West Shore Medical Hospital. They also had to, to, to do uh, a track, so to speak, so as to get him to breathe through a tube. And he has some broken ribs and a fractured hand. Yes, fractured hand. A fractured left hand and some broken ribs. But we have been assured by the doctor that he will recover. Minister Warner told reporters no expense would be spared in treating the injured persons. We told them, Dr. Rice, that whatever is needed, we shall provide. The sky is the limit as far as the yeah, recovery is concerned and I tell you something that I have come here and I've seen here and this is the best I've seen in the country so far. It is absolutely first class. Uh, one couldn't expect more and I, I want to commend both the institution and the medical team looking after him. They're doing a first class job. The reports indicated that the vehicle hit a curb on a sharp bend in Charlottesville which caused it to run off course. Head of the Defence Force, Brigadier Kenrick Morat, commended the driver of the vehicle for avoiding a bigger disaster. What the driver did, however, and this is commendable, he did well to keep the truck on the roadside and banked it against the side of the hill rather than go to the other side and have a greater tragedy befall us. Fourteen persons who were admitted to the Scarborough General Hospital have since been discharged. For CNC3, I am Chester Sambrano. And several residents of Charlottesville are today giving their reactions to the accident which occurred last evening. They say the incident reiterates the lack of proper road infrastructure in their community. One resident says their cries have been falling on deaf ears for years. We need the road to fix because the condition we, we in here is not an easy condition at all. The road steep and the incline much bigger late. In order for things to work good. And as we go, all them getting an accident. Meanwhile, another resident laments the lack of an ambulance service in Charlottesville. When the accident took place last night, people had to use a private vehicle truck and to carry people to the hospital, which was so bad. The government had to stop, or the THC had to stop playing politics with people's life. The residents are calling on the Tobago House of Assembly to act now and fix the roads and also put proper working health facilities in place in order to prevent loss of life. Well, the Oilfield Workers Trade Union is warning of possible fuel shortages soon as the entire Petrotrin refinery has been shut down over differences between the union and Petrotrin's management. The union says Petrotrin's management claims of a contingency plan to provide fuel are not true. Cameron Ivan Tulsi attended today's news conference and Samson Nanton reports. OWTU President General Ansel Roger has made it clear the entire Petrotrin refinery is now shut down. As we speak, the entire Petrotrin operation is down. The producing fields at Santa Flora, Pinal Barakpo, Forest Reserve, Point 14 Central, Trinma, and the base Point 14 and offshore Soldado, and of course, Point Apier the marine operations, and also the entire refinery. 
He says the company is giving contrary information with regards to contingency plans for the supply of fuel across the country. They are with some contingency plan to distribute gasoline to the motoring public and that that will not see any measure of inconvenience. There can be nothing further from the truth. The union's grouse is over three issues. One of them is the decision by the government to issue a marketing license to Bunkers Oil International Corporation. The union insists that Petrotrin should have this opportunity instead. It is our belief that if Petrotrin go aggressively into the bunkering market, Petrotrin would increase its profitability almost immediately. Because as we speak, there is an immediate market outside on the seas for ships to be bunkered. The union and management met on Sunday, but the workers are not satisfied with the response. They didn't say anything that would satisfy us. They are saying that it is not their decision. And that is where we have the problem. Another issue is the number of vacancies at Petrotrin. Roche putting it at 500, saying when vacancies are not filled, the workload on the other workers is heavier. And the third issue is the non-payment of variable pay to employees for the fiscal year 2009 to 2010. Petrotrin has said that the refinery registered a loss in that year and that profit sharing was not applicable. And that's the story which takes us to the Your Vote question tonight. The question we're asking you to vote on is, do you support the action taken by the OWTU to keep workers off the job at Petrotrin? Text your response to the number 2623. If your response is yes, you're texting the letter Y, and if it's no, the letter N. We'll give you an update on the voting during the newscast and the final vote at the very end tonight. An investigation has been launched into a video making its way around social media sites like Facebook, which shows a police officer physically assaulting a man in full view of the public. The incident reportedly occurred in the Shaguanas area on Independence Day. National Security Minister Jack Warner says he has seen the video and has instructed that a probe be launched. The police and the Deputy Commissioner of Police have given them a, a, a copy of the vehicle number as well and I've asked the Commissioner of Police and Deputy to do some investigation and to advise me um, appropriately of the nature of what happened. Speaking with reporters on Monday, Minister Warner admitted that he is disturbed by the incident. It. I made the point that nobody today is free and don't believe that because you don't see somebody around that you, that you can hide. A telephone, a, a mobile phone is enough and that picture on the Facebook, I must confess, does not please me very much. It was back to school for thousands of students across Trinidad and Tobago this morning as the July-August vacation came to an official end. While many were excited to begin classes, over in Diamondville, primary school students were immediately sent home after a security officer was found dead on the school's premises. Ray Rambley has more. Nothing like a reassuring kiss to start off the new school year. Scenes like these were common in Port of Spain this Monday morning as thousands of students eagerly returned to classes. For some, like this little one, the first time attending school proved to be a bit intimidating. CNC3 News caught up with a few students and they told us they were anxious to see their friends and get back to work. I'm very excited to go back to school. Why? Because I was missing school. Why? Very excited. Can't wait to get back and learn new things. But over in the West, death marred the reopening of the Diamond Vale Primary School in Dago Martin. But the first day of school for students here was over before classes even begun, as a security guard was found dead in his booth just after six this morning. The cleaner who found him told us that he had been complaining of heart problems over the past few months, but told them that he needed to keep working to pay off for a loan. CNC3 News understands that a cleaner reported for work just before 6 a.m. and found the school's gates locked. She said a groundsman jumped the gate in search of 47-year-old security officer Fabian Shufang. The woman said she called Shufang's wife, who in turn called his cell phone. It was then the cleaner said they heard the phone ringing in the guard booth and that was where they found the man's body on the floor in a sleeping position. The woman said the MTS officer had been complaining of heart problems for some time but refused to stop working. Ten-year-old student Cody Chin tells us the security officer was well-loved. He was a very nice person and he was always there for me. 
like whenever I needed him, when we needed to talk, I would just go by him so we could um thing. You know, it was like a nice relationship. While the school had to close for the police to carry out investigations, the news did not sit well with some. This student could not hold back her tears. Her father telling us she was deeply disappointed by the school's closure this morning. Another student, seven-year-old Genesis, explaining that she too was excited to see her friends. I was going to school and then people said nobody Nobody gets to go to school and I wanted to meet all my friends from in class and I was so happy to go in another standard. For CNC3, I'm Rhea Rambley. Protest action by Maruga residents over the state of the roads this morning resulted in students having to return home while on their way to school. The residents lit tires to show their displeasure with the delay in fixing the road. Cameron Ivan Tulsi covered the protest and Samson Nanton reports. Planned for the biggest impact, a fiery protest on the morning of the new school year, a street used by school children. Indian Walk residents say they are tired of neglect where their roads are concerned. It's months now since January, my grandmother complaining to Wasa, and now Wasa and works in dispute over who's supposed to fix the road. The Wasa water lying under the road, she says, has been bursting regularly, causing the road to cave in, and many here are affected. So we have people's houses who cracked it, and some people who had to evacuate the houses already. And we have other people who are being affected by the dust. Their member of parliament is Clifton Dicotto, but she claims he has not been responding. Well, he haven't said anything when he passes, his glasses wind up, and he in a high van driving through post with the old car, mashing up on this bad road. Taxi fare even went up because of the conditions of the road. Another resident told us that they've been begging for help for far too long and felt this was the best action that they could take to bring this to the attention of the authorities, who she says only show up when it matters to them. Election time they will come back. We're waiting that same fire, we're waiting for them when they come back. <laughs> but the other victims today were the students who told us how they felt about having to miss school. Sad. I can't go to school first morning at school. I feel very sad that I can't go to school. I wanted to meet my new teacher. At least one school, Coin Hamilton, was badly affected. We already called the teachers from the school and they said that the Maxi is from the Oklahoma turn back already. They say it's only a matter of time before a bigger tragedy happens with the state of the road in Indian War. <laughs> We now join Astor and he's here in studio to tell us what we can expect coming up in our sportscast a bit later on. Astor. Well, thank you so much, Charlene. Well, Bangladesh, they're here for the T20 Asia versus the Caribbean T20 International Tournament. And their champion all-rounder, Shakib al Hassan says the Queen's Park Oval holds fun memories for his team. Plus, we have a new date has been set for that all-gala function for the 2012 London Olympians. And plus, we have... Coming up, we have, we have more as I hand it back over to Charlene. Okay, I'll still see you then. Let's continue with the news now with Samson Nanton. Samson. Thank you so much, Charlene. Before we go on, though, we want to ask you to vote once again on this question. Tonight, we are asking you, do you support the action taken by the OWTU to keep workers off the job at Petrotrin? Text your response to the number 2623. If you want to vote yes, text Y. If you want to vote no, text then. We'll give you an update as we go along. And of course, the final result comes up at the end of tonight's news. Now, just ahead on the CNC3 News, strong words from Ku Commission Chairman as attorneys for Abu Bakr seek to account for his absence. Tutor says as many as a dozen schools not opened, the minister denies the claim. And later, a glitch this weekend in the TT food card system cost the government $2 million. These stories are more when the CNC3 News continues. Through the sound of steel pan, voices lifted in song, and the magic of the artist's brushstroke, she showed us that music and art could heal and lift the soul of a nation. First Citizens honors Dr. Pat Bishop. Happy 50th Independence. In 1924, he began making beverages to be sold in traditional horse carts. He took a little drink called Red Spot and created a beverage empire which now refreshes the world. First Citizens celebrates Sheikh Mohammed Jalil of SM Jalil. Happy 50th Independence.
Whether it's for the best tasting breads, cakes and pastries or doubles pizza and paratha roti, you need to start with premium flour. Nutrimix and country fried flour are nothing less than premium products manufactured to the highest standards. Available in 2 and 10 kilogram sizes from supermarkets nationwide, our range of flour was developed for its superior taste and nutritional value. We have the right flour for your family's every need. Nutrimix and country fried flour. Superior quality, honest prices. As we continue, the public may not get to hear the much-anticipated testimony of Jamaat al-Muslimin leader Imam Yazin Abu Bakr at the Commission of Inquiry into the 1990 attempted coup. An in-camera hearing may be considered in order to finally hear the testimony of the Imam, who now faces a retrial in his sedition matter. Attorneys for Mr. Bakr came in for some strong criticism from the Commission chairman today. Kamal Georges explains. The issuance of a summons to Jamaat al-Muslimin leader Imam Yassin Abu Bakr still failed to secure his presence on Monday. Mr. Bakr was expected to answer questions about beginning his testimony before the Commission of Inquiry into the July 1990 insurrection. But instead, they received a letter from Bakr's attorney, Wayne Sturge, explaining that any testimony could put the Imam at a disadvantage when he appears for a retrial in his sedition matter. Sturge stated that, quote, unless and until there is a final resolution of his trial, either by a verdict or by the filing of a notice of discontinuance by the Director of Public Prosecution, the Imam, in order to ensure for himself a fair trial, will be unable to answer questions posed to him at the inquiry. It was not what the Commission Chairman Sir David Simmons expected. He accused Mr. Sturge of, quote, disrespecting the Commission as he expressed his annoyance and frustration with the unavailability of answers from a junior counsel sitting in for Mr. Sturge. So you have no instructions as to his physical or other state. You have nothing from Mr. Sturge. In fact, you are now most unhelpful to the Commission. Mr. Bakker holds the key to understanding a lot of the events of July 27, 1990. So how does the Commission proceed? Director of Public Prosecutions Roger Gaspard suggested that a hearing away from the public be considered. But as far as the issue of pretrial publicity is concerned, it may be that Mr. Sturge's anxieties can be put to rest if the Commission, in its wisdom, chooses to hear the testimony of Mr. Baca in camera. But how does the Commission exclude the public from a public inquiry for the testimony of the most crucial witness? We do have that power and loathe in this case, where the public interest is almost paramount to go that route. For CNC3, I'm Kamal Georges. A London, a Londonville man drowned in the Ministry of Agriculture pond on Sunday afternoon while on a line with friends and family. Jason Raguba was an IT technician employed with the Kova Tabaki Talparo Regional Corporation. He reportedly fell into the pond in, Debo, in uh, Depo Road around 5 o'clock on Sunday evening. The owner of the boat he was on also reportedly drowned in the same pond. Uh, Mr. Raguba was here on Sunday uh, together with some friends and family uh, having a fishing expedition and uh, we had a mishap where he fell off the boat and was unable to, the family was unable to, to get him out of the water in time so he drowned unfortunately. The pond in which Mr. Raguba drowned is one of three in which, uh, in the area in which uh, and this pond was once used by the Ministry of Agriculture for irrigation of tobacco crops. The councillor said he intends to contact the ministry about adding more security around the ponds, which are not open to members to of the public. In place for people not to venture in these ponds in these because areas. because they are in fact deep. They are dangerous. They are caimans in these these ponds. So uh, we really, really would like to, as the councillor for the area, I would really like for people to desist from coming to these ponds and 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 trying to, to do the lime and cooking and whatever it is. 
Well, let's return now to some stories on the reopening of school. The Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association, TUTA, says preliminary reports show that some 12 schools were not open today for the start of the 2012-2013 school year. Acting President of TUTA, Devanan Sinanan, says that he understands the issues that the Education Ministry is facing, but he notes that this is very unfortunate since the issue has been recurring over the years. We have more from Otto Carrington. The 2012-2013 school term opened today, but some students had to be turned away from their schools. According to Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association, from their reports there were problems at some 12 schools that affected a reopening for the new term. Acting President Devon Ansinanan explains that most of the issues stem from infrastructure pest management and sewer issues. We have information that would seem to indicate that more than a dozen schools as of now have not really been able to open and we expect as the day unfolds that we will get more reports um, in terms of schools that are not ready for um, you know, the teaching and learning process to take place in a safe and secure environment. Mr. Sinanan says he understands the task of the education ministry is huge, but believes that systems should be properly set. And unfortunately, the ministry was only able to effect repairs in about 77 schools. So that leaves a large number of schools out there with urgent uh, problems. And um, the, the capacity of the Ministry of Education, or lack thereof, was identified as the reason why the ministry was unable to meet its original target. But Education Minister Dr. Tim Gopising says all systems are in place for a smooth start to the new school term. This despite statements by the Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association. Chuta says that at the end of the last school term, 210 schools were identified for repair. For CNC3, I am Otto Carrington. And the Education Minister, Dr. Tim Gopi Singh, says all schools over 50 years of age will be rebuilt. Dr. Gopi Singh said that he made a statement as he presided over the official opening of the St. Barbara Spiritual Shouter Baptist School. Chester Sambrano reports. Day one of the new school term and Education Minister, Dr. Tim Gopi Singh, toured two of the additions to the list of new schools. The Arima New Government Secondary and the St. Barbara Spiritual Shouter Baptist School. Speaking with reporters following the tours, Dr. Gopi Singh said 120 schools are over 100 years old and close to 300 are over 50. He said it would be more cost efficient to rebuild than to repair the schools. Instead of um, spending half a million and a million dollars to fix a roof and uh, flooring for a school, it is more economic to reconstruct the entire school at a cost of about five or six million maximum. Minister Gopi Singh also responded to criticisms from TUTA over schools repaired during the July-August vacation. I think TUTA is burying their heads, heads in the sand like an ostrich. Not, not uh, seem to be unaware of the real true facts surrounding uh, repairs to schools over a period of time. And after 14 years, the Baptist community opened the doors to their own school in Maloney. Archbishop Barbara Gray Burke says it would help improve the lives of many. Education takes you out of poverty. This was my main objective in hammering and struggling, falling down, getting up to get a school for my African brothers and sisters. The Ministry of Works has started construction on a new roadway to ensure the safety of the students. For CNC3, I am Chester Sambrano. Well, in our positive vibes tonight, we place some focus on the Pan Development Limited, an organization formed in 1976 and dedicated to the upliftment of the national instrument. The company hosted a six-week course which saw a number of youth being taught the art of pan tuning. Tonight's Positive Vibes segment is brought to you by Nescafe. It is not as easy as it looks. Pan tuning takes time and a number of students got a first-hand experience free of charge courtesy Pan Development Limited. The company has a number of loyal sponsors who absorbed the cost for the six-week program, which took place during the July-August vacation period. Pan instructor at PDL, Musa Mohammed, says the students are taught Pan tuning from beginning to end. What I teach the students is that um, from the, the early stages of building the Pan, that you must cut the drum, right? 
You have to point the drum, the center of the drum, right? And then I show them how to go down. Basically, you know, I'll take my time and let them go down on the instrument. See them how to clean up the drum with the hammer, because the, the drum, as you, when you sink in the pan, it, the drum must have a lot of, like, a lot of marks, hammer marks. See them how to take the hammer marks off of the drum, or how to put in the note in the pan. There are only three demands made of the students. One, punctuality. Two, regular attendance. And three, a proper learning attitude. Tonight's Positive Vibes segment was brought to you by Nescafe. Positive Vibes there. Well, time now for what you saw, where we highlight the video and the photos you send us. The address, news at cnc3.co.tt. Our first set of photos come from Jared, who says that the roads off Caratel Road, Section 1, Bonadventure in Casparillo, have been deteriorating for several years. For over a year, it has become inaccessible to vehicles entirely with residents either being forced to leave their vehicles parked on the roadside and walk to their places of residence or resort to driving approximately 30 minutes out of their way to get to their houses through the Pass Force Road extension, a road that is also slowly deteriorating. Foot traffic has also become nearly impossible without endangering oneself, according to Jared. Then from Donna, who sent us some highlights from the Independence Day Parade as it hit the streets, these photos taken at the corner of Tragreet and Carlos Streets after the official parade at the Savannah. Donna says that Latoya on a laid-back bicycle caused quite a stir among onlookers. And finally from Donnell who tells us that this photo was taken while in standstill traffic at Chagones on a rainy day. Donald says that it appears that the back window was unable to go all the way up, therefore the passenger had to shelter with their umbrella. Donald exclaims, only in TNT, fix your vehicle people. Yeah. Uh, you can guess it. We have a lot of fun with, the, with what you saw segments. It's hilarious photos that come in. We really certainly appreciate all of them. <laughs> if you see anything as funny as that or anything else you think it's important to you, send us uh, those photos or video to the address news at cnc3.co.tt. That's all from me. Charlene, back to you. We had two only in Trinidad moments yeah. there. The bike photo right. and that picture of the umbrella. But Samson, <laughs> I just to ask you, all the students were saying earlier they were so excited to go back to school on the first day of school. I don't remember being excited to go back to school <laughs> on the first day of school. I think I, I can concur the same thing, yes. Yeah, sure. I don't think you would be either. But good for them. That's so good to know the younger generation. They look forward to going back to school and seeing their friends. That's, that's good. That's inspiring. I, not for me, though. Okay, okay, Samson, thank you so much yeah. for bringing us all that serious news as well as what you saw which certainly made a lot of us smile thank you so much well let me remind you of tonight's your vote question at this time the question we're asking you to vote on is do you support the action taken by the OWTU to keep workers off the job at Petrotrin text your response to the number 2623 if your response is yes you're texting the letter Y and if it's no the letter N we'll give you an update on the voting during the newscast and the final vote at the very end tonight. We we'll move right across now to Astil Ren. He has your sportscast. Astil. Oh, thank you so much, Charlie. Well, coming up in this evening's sports coverage, all around the Shakib Hassan says Queen's Park Oval will fun memories as Bangladesh prepare for Asia versus the Caribbean T20 tournament. Kurt Sinef stopped in his bid to win the WBC light heavyweight international title. Sean Corbin wants a piece of Joey Vargas, the man who defeated Sinef. Secondary school's football kicks off this week. A new date has been set for the gala function for the London 2012 athletes. And Roger Federer seems to be unbeatable at the US Open in Flushing Meadows. All next on Sport. You're talking to your best friend when you're getting a clean day family. You get cash back. You're talking to your best friend when you realize you're always a winner. You're talking to your best friend when you get a makeover.
You suddenly feel like dancing. Every dog gets its day. You have your cake and eat it too. Nightfall. You're talking to your best friend. Whatever else happens, always get extraordinary value with Digicel. Get $1 cash back for every paid minute on local Digi to Digi calls made during the day so you can talk more at night. Be extraordinary. Digicel. Studying for a degree, MBA or MSc at the School of Accounting and Management will change your future generation. We teach you over 140 different modules that will make you a game-changing success, confident, innovative, inspiring, versatile, and globally employable. Register now at the School of Accounting and Management or visit our website www.samtt.com or see us always on the front inside cover of your TSC directory. Programs offered are exclusive to us and on match to this region. Concentrate. Can you pause it? I need to go to the bathroom. No worries, go. Uh, let's see what he has recorded here. Street Dogs, 101 Dalmatians, Scooby Doo. Sex in the City? Done. Man, you got a nice litter box. What litter box? My litter box? With Direct TV Plus, it's possible to record all your favorite shows and movies for just $239 a month. You can replay, pause, and rewind all your favorite shows, plus record more than 100 hours of television. Call us now at 672-8111. With Direct TV, everything is possible. I love fresh salads. I love the breakfast too. I love the foot long. I love my gut right through. sweat not on skin get powerful 48 hour sweat protection plus quarter moisturizer technology only with dove men plus care deodorant feel the impact of freshness new dove men plus care aqua impact deodorant Members of Bangladesh World Cup cricket squad are here for the upcoming Asia versus the Caribbean International T20 tournament. The players went through the three rudiments of the game, fielding, batting and bowling during the training session at the Queen's Park Oval today. The Bangladesh players made use of the excellent conditions at the Queen's Park Oval during their training session. First, they were out on the main playing area doing some fielding practice. And after spending some time getting it right, they moved to the indoor and outdoor nets for batting practice. Champion all-rounder Shakib Al Hassan, who holds the number one spot in the world in the shorter version of the game, says he feels good about his current status, but the team's welfare comes first. It's all about team. Uh, team come first. Uh, if I contribute for the team, that will be great. And uh, it's not any individual. And uh, the two team we have got, uh, uh, we need to play well uh, together. Otherwise, uh, we know that we can't win. Uh, uh, depending on uh, like one or two guys' performance, we need to uh, work really hard for to win a game. And we need to contribute at least four or five guys to win a game. So that's what we are looking for. And uh, yeah, it's a good feeling to be sitting on the top position. But uh, that doesn't really matter if you are not winning for your uh, winning anything for your team uh, so team come pass Alassane pointed out the tournament is very important to them and it's part of the preparation for the upcoming ICC T20 World Cup in Sri Lanka this month these are the games will be very intense as well uh, because you know Trinidad uh, got uh, so many national team players they will be playing for them uh, so it will be a very good contest and if we do well here we'll have uh, we'll have full of confidence to going to the world cup so we are looking forward to play this uh, tournament 
The all-rounder is returning to the Queen's Park Oval, having been here in 2007 during the ICC Cricket World Cup, and says it holds good memories for them. It feels great. Obviously, we have a very good uh, memories here. We beat India and Varmoda to qualify for the second round here. So there, there are some very good memories here. Uh, and uh, this is my fourth time in West Indies, um, although we didn't play after uh, 2007 World Cup here. But uh, we have been around. Uh, so we know the condition and uh, these wickets will be very similar to subcontinent. So this will help us a lot uh, uh, coming uh, up for the upcoming T20 World Cup. Well, Afghanistan cricketers are during at about this time at the Piaco International Airport, while Barbados are cardiac to arrive on Tuesday. Well, local champion Kurt Sinet was defeated in his attempt to win the World Boxing Council International light heavyweight title at the Woodbrook Youth Facility last evening. Sinet went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ugandan Joey Vargas, and after making a positive start to the bout, was put on the canvas in the fourth round before the referee stopped the contest. Jassim Marik has more details. It was an exciting card put on at the Woodbrook Youth Facility and so brought out those familiar faces in the audience. The general crowd on hand waited with eager anticipation and they were first treated to some excellent entertainment. Young lightweight Prince Lee Isidore taking on Cassius Matthews out of Guyana and both men taking a very cautious approach to proceedings in the opening round. But Prince Lee pounced later on in round one as he faced planted Matthews on this barrage. A mandatory 10 count only served as a formality as this fight was done in the first round. There was also an MMA fight or mixed martial arts for the viewers' delight. Local boy Dwayne Hines versus Scott Hudson of the United States. And as could be expected, this one had action from the first bell. The skillful Hines neatly avoided Hudson's attempted leg lock and gained the upper hand with ease. And later, as Hudson tried to escape, Hines again overpowered his opponent and put a swift end to this fight with some crushing blows to the head. It was all over inside the first round. Hudson had a hard time fighting the effects of that beating as Hines was declared the winner. And soon it was on to the next one, the big one, the international title fight between Kurt Sinet and Joey Vegas. In round one, the two fighters were watchful, feeling each other out and finding their range. But Sinet looked to up the pace in the second and started with some menacing swings which he failed to land. Into the third round where Vegas began to expose the home favorite, putting Sinet onto the ropes on the counter-attack in this one. And in the fourth round, Sinet walked right into a solid right, which Vegas followed with a swift left-right combination. Another brutal right-hander got Sinet familiar with the mat, although he made a quick recovery. But it was perhaps too hasty, as not long after that, Vegas moved in and another left-right brought an end to this fight midway through round four. Sinet, though, took issue with the manner in which the fight was stopped. I disagree with Jardine's decision to stop that fight. Then get an eight count. Supposed to get an eight count standing. Reporting for CNC Three Sports, I am Jassy Merik. Well, after that fight, well, the immediate challenge came from Vegas by another local fighter for a, t for a title defense. Special advisor to the boxing board, box sports, revealed that Sean Corbin had thrown down the gauntlet. Sean Corbin. Sean Well, an emotional Vegas responded that he needed time to savor the big win, but stated that he, he and his handlers will no doubt consider the option. If he just go home, have a rest, then we'll be chatting to him. We'll see what is going to happen. I'll ask them what if they want that, I'll take it, because I don't scare no one. Well, the much talked about grand appreciation function for all of these countries, 2012 Olympic athletes, has been postponed. Sports Minister Anil Roberts had previously announced that the national reception for the Olympic at the Olympic gold medalist Sean Kishon Walcott, that September 3rd will be the date for an official function for all of this country's athletes who competed at the London Olympic Games. When contacted today, communication specialist at the sport company, the body responsible for the function, Agent Raymond, indicated that September 
December 3rd was not an official date and no one was given an official invitation for the function. Raymond added that some of uh, they were still competing at the Diamond League meeting and at the Paralympic Games, Chantal Inns and Carlos Green were currently in London at the Paralympic Games. The new date put forward by Raymond is September 13th when all of these athletes will be available. And then some more news now. Well, the Paralympic short putter uh, Carlos Green placed 11th overall in that event in London today. Green threw the medal some 10.87 meters to set a new personal record. The performance came one day after a similar 11th place result in the, in the discuss event. And tomorrow, Chantal Enns will be back in the pool. This time, she will compete in the women's 400 meters freestyle from lane 7 of Heat 2. And the 2012 edition of the North Zone Secondary Schools Football League kicks off with a doubleheader at the Hazley Crawford Stadium on Friday. The first game of the doubleheader sees East Mukarapu against Fatima College, while the following game, two hours later, league champions in Anthony's College, they square off against Queen's Royal College. The gates open at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And the Trinidad and Tobago Rugby Football Union President Leslie Figaro has expressed concern at the news that the Defence Force team was involved in a vehicle accident in Tobago last night. The Defence Force played and defeated Tobago Rugby Club 47-30 in their senior division fixture on Saturday. And on Sunday evening, the players were returning from Charlottesville when the accident occurred. In an official media release, Figaro said, quote, the thoughts and prayers of the entire fraternity go out to the players and their families at this time. The priority is the full recovery of everyone from their injuries. According to Figaro, the Rugby Football Union will, however, they will support the Defence Force rugby team in every circumstances possible. And in some football news now, Real Madrid superstar Cristiano Ronaldo scored twice in his team's 3-0 victory over Granada on Sunday. But Ronaldo did not celebrate in his usual fashion. He told reporters afterwards it was more of a professional nature than a personal one. I'm very happy about this goal tally, but the most important thing is the team, Real Madrid. When I don't celebrate goals, it's because I'm not happy. People here at the club know why, so I have nothing more to say. Is it anything to do with your form? Five games, four goals. It's nothing to do with my form. Well, the world number one Roger Federer is through to the 34th consecutive quarterfinal of the Grand Slam. The, and this is three short of Jimmy Connors. Well, Federer got into the quarterfinals after a Marty Fish withdrew for from the encounter. Also moving on in the women's division is the champion Sam Stosser, Maria Sharapova and Serena Williams. World number one will next play Czech Thomas Burdick, who defeated Spain's Nicolas Almagro in straight sets on Monday to reach the US Open quarters for the first time in 10 attempts. On the women's side of the draw, defending champion Sam Stosa is through to the quarterfinals. The 18-year-old stunned Kim Kleisters and Lee Na in her last two matches to reach the last 16. But a third Grand Slam champion proved a step too far for Robson as she lost 6-4, 6-4 to a determined Stosa. The Australian surrendered eight match points and was broken a couple of times by the teenager before finally coming through in straight sets. Stosa will now meet world number one Victoria Azarenka of Belarus, who's through to the quarterfinals of the US Open for the first time. She beat Anna Tatishvili in straight sets two and two. Azarenka has already won the year's other Grand Slam played on hard courts, the Australian Open. And in an all-Russian affair, 2006 champion Maria Sharapova of Russia beat Nadia Petrova. Sharapova took the first set 6-1, lost the second 6-4, but then rallied to take the third with one crucial break of serve. Again, the score of that set 6-4. The French Open champion moves on. Three-time champion Serena Williams stormed in her 10th US Open quarterfinal with a six-love, six-love win over the Czech Republic's Andrei Hlavakova. The match lasted just 57 minutes. Williams had 31 winners and just seven unforced errors and plays Anna Ivanovic next. And it's now to a Monday evening sports high. It's from last evening Independence Fight Card where mixed martial artist Dwayne Hines pounded his opponent. 
Mixed martial arts is not for the faint of heart. It's physical, it's competitive, it's fierce, and it's extremely brutal. And if you ask Scott Hudson, he would agree that it's sometimes embarrassing. The American fighter lasted barely a minute in the ring with local boy Dwayne Hines last night, although we're sure that during his days it may have seemed even longer. Hines, who boasts a record of just one defeat in 10 attempts, bettered that record last night. And for his outstanding skill and ruthlessness, he gets our CNC3 sports high. Well, we asked the question earlier on, how long was Leslie Stewart uh, the WBA light heavyweight champion? If your answer is five months, you are correct. Leslie Stewart defeated Marvin Pops Johnson for the world title on May 23, 1977, and lost the championship belt to Virgin Hill on September 5th the same year. Stewart retired in 2000. And on that note, that's our Monday evening sportscast. It's back to you, Charlene. Castle, thank you very much. Quite a good sports cast and a good sports high. Thank you so much. Let me give you an update on the Your Vote at this time. The question you're voting on tonight is, do you support the action taken by the OWTU to keep workers off the job at Petrotrin? Well, so far, 4% of you are supporting Petrotrin. Well, the OWTU, sorry. While 96% of you are not in support of their action to keep workers off the job at Petrotrin. So remember, you still have your chance to get your vote in. You have about 15 minutes left to text in your response, so be sure to do so. So we're now going to take a short break, but coming up just ahead on the CNC3 News tonight, a glitch in the food card system has resulted in several cards being credited over the weekend. It costs the government $2 million. All the details just ahead. It's true. It has been proven that coffee is a natural source of antioxidants because it comes from coffee cherries. And like some other fruits, it provides an important amount of antioxidants. I drink several cups a day, and when I do it, I enjoy more than the aroma and the taste I love. Another good reason to drink Nescafe. Rennie Quau is a male track and field sprinter from Trinidad and Tobago who specializes as a quarter miler. Quau gained regional recognition in 2004 with a gold medal at the CAC Junior Championships, followed the next year by gold as the under-20 Carifta 400 meters champion. 2006 saw the Tobago-born Quau defend his titles. His full potential as a junior athlete was recognized later that year by his IAAF win in Beijing. Quao made a comfortable transition into senior athletics. He placed in the 400 meters final of the 2008 Olympics and in 2009 went on to win bronze at the IAAF meet in Berlin. He again medaled at the 2012 World Indoor Championships in Turkey ahead of the anticipated London Olympics. Disappointment in London as injury prevented his participation in the Olympic Games. Rennie Quau, a Trinidad and Tobago legacy in sport. From outdoor to indoor, professional to sporting activities, to long hours on the computer, LensTech at Ferrera Optical gives you up to $800 off premium lenses with frames to suit your lifestyle needs. Offer ends September 15th only at Ferrera Optical. Introducing New Degree with Motion Sense Technology, the first and only antiperspirant activated directly by movement to release bursts of freshness all day. The more you move, the more it works. Degree, it won't let you down.
Well, it's time now to take a look at the weather forecast. The Met Office says Trinidad and Tobago can expect cool conditions tonight. Tomorrow is expected to be sunny with light to moderate showers and a chance of an afternoon thunder shower. Seas are normal with waves, two meters in open water and less than one meter in sheltered areas. Tomorrow's maximum temperature will get up to 33 degrees at Piaco and 32 degrees at Crown Point in Tobago. Sunrise 5.56 in the morning and sunset at 6.13. We now take a short break. Stay with us. from the final round of the 2009 Stephen Ames staring down an approach from 177 yards. Stephen Michael Ames is the first touring professional on the PGA Tour to emerge from Trinidad and Tobago. In March 2006, Ames won the Players' Championship at Sawgrass, earning $1.44 million from the richest purse on the PGA Tour and a spot at the Masters. With the win, Ames became the second oldest champion in championship history, climbed to 27th in the official world golf ranking, and surpassed the 10 million US dollar career earnings barrier. Ames took Canadian citizenship after meeting Canadian wife Jody. In 2005, he started the Stephen Ames Foundation to provide funding for junior golf programs in Canada and Trinidad and Tobago. The annual Stephen Ames Cup is both a tournament and cultural exchange of junior golfers from each country. Stephen Michael Ames, Players' Champion, Trinidad and Tobago's Legacy in Sport. A mysterious knight arrived at a dirty castle with a bottle of Sif cream. Only Sif's millions of microparticles could lift the cauldrons burnt on dirt and go on cleaning. So the knight was crowned queen. Sif cream, always a beautiful ending. Enjoy the new look and same great taste today. Ginseng up, the root of all power. When it was announced, it's, uh, the suspense was over. And then when I looked at the contestants behind me and all around me, I realized what it meant, what it meant for Trinidad and Tobago. What makes me proud about Trinidad and Tobago? It's really the spirit of the people. We are a beautiful people. What are you proud about? Tell us on Twitter by tweeting to hashtag I4TNT. Where there's love for country, there's energy. Where there's energy, there's BPTT. Responsible and don't drink and drive. Designate a friend and lime again. Be the one. A message from Trinidad and Tobago Beverage Alcohol Alliance. Hey guys, the police caravan is coming to you. This might be a start of an exciting career. Trinidad and Tobago, you need to be a part of it. I am Super Jigger TC and I endorse the police caravan. I am Devon Matthews and I'm telling you, you need to go out and see what the TTPS is capable of doing. I'm Shal Marshall and I endorse the police caravan. Instructions now, the police caravan come to show you how. Get on board. Come on down to the Police Caravan, Friday 7th September 2012, Mid-Centre Mall Car Park, Chagonas, 12 noon to 5 p.m. Be there.
Welcome back. Tonight, the Minister of the People and Social Development is admitting that a glitch in its TT food card system affected thousands of cardholders over the weekend when users found they had been paid double for the month of September. In a news conference this afternoon, Minister Dr. Glenn Ramadar Singh explained that there was a glitch at the government's bank, First Citizens Bank, which led to an overcrediting of cards. But for a couple hours on Saturday, we wish to acknowledge that 6,000 card holders, TT card holders, received an advance payment of between $400 and $700 for the month of September. The minister says immediately after the bank picked up on the error, moves were made to correct it. He says this would have left some users at a disadvantage. The discrepancy was picked up in the system at about 4 p.m. and was corrected. This means that extra funds were taken out of the accounts. While the process was reversed immediately, some cardholders' account went into negative balance because they would have really already used up the entire amounts credited. Some cardholders who may have been in the process of purchasing may have also received an insufficient funds message when they tried to purchase because the glitch was corrected. The Ministry is assuring that no cardholder will be penalised for the error and assures there will be money on all 6,000 cards for the month of, of October. The Minister says the Ministry is working alongside the bank in trying to find who is culpable for this error. We now take a short break. Stay with us. Shaving can irritate skin, causing dark marks to become visible. Dove has the effective solution. New Dove Clear Tone Antiperspirant. The result? Underarms with visibly reduced dark marks and an even tone. New Dove Clear Tone. To be equal. To live in a society that responds to you without prejudice. To be treated fairly no matter what your background may be. Regardless of race or religion, regardless of geographic location, gender, or any disability you may have. It's not just an idea we should live by, but an ideal that our children can look up to, that our communities can aspire to, that our employers must embrace. But it's more than that. It is the right of every citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. It is a right that is championed and upheld by the Equal Opportunity Commission. The EOC is about educating, breaking down barriers, and eliminating obstacles to truly empower people on the basis of their merit. This is the mission of the Equal Opportunity Commission of Trinidad and Tobago. Equality is everyone's dream. It's everyone's right. Just tell us your budget and we'll find the right fit. We are innovation ahead of the game. So affordable, Lifetime Solutions. You can trust the roof to us, Lifetime Solutions. In shoes all day, get Magnetic Health Shoes. Soft and comfortable for long hours of wear. Helps neuropathy, bone spurs and plantar fasciitis. Improve blood circulation, relieve pain, numbness, burning and swelling. Magnetic Far Infrared and Reflexology Massager includes a slimming belt with 25 acupressure modes and 8 massage pads to massage other parts of the body, including hands and feet. Relieves tiredness in the legs, hips and back. Improve and maintain your health. Available at Modern Caribbean Enterprises Limited. Phone 6530011. He's agile. He's fast. He's strong. He protects. He is your special companion. And your dog deserves special treatment. That's why you should give your dog Command Performance. A premium brand of great tasting dog food packed with high protein and nutrients to help build your dog's muscle and strength. Show your dog you care. Give them the proper nutrition to perform at their best. Command Performance. Powerful nutrition for active dogs. We now have a summary of the main international stories from today. Happy to be free. The South African court releases the first group of minors held after police killed 34 of their colleagues. Tracing Mubarak's fortune. A BBC investigation finds Britain has failed to spot some assets that Egypt wanted frozen and returned. And move over Spider-Man. Watch as Prince Andrew abseils down Europe's tallest building, all for a good cause. 
So we're now going to take a short break and come back with the wrap for tonight's news. Stay with us. Hey guys, the police caravan is coming to you. This might be a start of an exciting career. Trinidad and Tobago, you need to be a part of it. I am Super Jigga TC and I endorse the police caravan. I am Devon Matthews and I'm telling you, you need to go out and see what the TTPS is capable of doing. I'm Shal Marshall and I endorse the police caravan. Instructions now, the police caravan come to show you how. Get on board. Come on down to the police caravan. Friday, 7 September 2012, Mid Center Mall, Car Park, Shagonas, 12 noon to 5 p.m. Be there. As we go, let's bring you the final result of tonight's Your Vote. Final results 95% of you support the action taken by the OWTU to keep workers off the job at Petrotrin. Yeah. Well, let me just correct that actually. Yes. It's 95% of you have voted in no, no that's you correct. don't support. <laughs> the OWTU and we do we want to make that very clear that yeah. was just an error it is you all have seen at the status at about 7.30 it was the other way around so it's 95% of us of you out there have voted and no you don't support the OWTU's calls for workers to not turn up for work while 5% of you have voted and yes you do support the OWTU's support the action that they are taking with workers to stay off the job so that's how we wrap up the 7 o'clock news here on CNC3 on the first day back to school to so all the